All right, praise the Lord. Well, um, I'm sure you're wondering what I'm doing with it with a hedge trimmer. Um, you know what, what what's what's Tony up to this morning? Well, let me just try and untangle it a bit here. This is my message prop, and uh, I was out using this yesterday, trimming trimming the garden. Only the things that should be trimmed. There we go. There we go. Well, I'm not going to tell you right now why I've got this here, but I will in a moment. So be patient. <laughs> and I want you to turn to Luke chapter 9. And this morning, I'm not going to share for long. We're going to have a ministry time. But my task today is to loosen you up for the next few weeks of Holy Spirit ministry. Amen? We are going to have a good time drinking, hungering, receiving, positioning our hearts for fresh encounters of the Holy Spirit. And today is Pentecost Sunday. And personally, I'm so grateful that every year we have this reminder like we do with Christmas and Easter I thank God that we have Pentecost Sunday, a nudge from heaven about the importance of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and supernatural encounters that God has for every one of us from heaven. Okay, Luke chapter 9. Spiritual power is the birthright of every believer. Whoever you are this morning... I want you to know spiritual power is your birthright. God has not ordained to send any one of his children into the world impotent, powerless, and disadvantaged. But he has given the Holy Spirit to empower us. And the initiation of that, that where it all begins, is the baptism of with the Holy Spirit. Praise God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now Luke chapter 9, he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Jesus gave two things to his disciples, power and authority. Authority, the word is exousia. It means the right, the permission, the commission to do something, the authority to do it. Power, the word is dunamis, and it's the ability to do what you have the authority to do. Now, Jesus in Matthew 28, at the end of the gospel, he gave us the Great Commission. And he said, go into all the world and teach, teaching and preaching. Well, let's, let's, let's just turn to it so we, we just quote it correctly. Matthew chapter 28. All authority, in verse 18, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Authority comes from the commission. Jesus sent us. He sent you and me. He said, go. It wasn't an option. It wasn't just for full-time ministers or pastors or preachers. Every single one of us is under that apostolic commission. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, therefore go. Authority comes from the commission. Say that with me. Authority comes with the commission. But power comes with the encounter. Now, if you look at the end of Luke's gospel and um, chapter 24, and Jesus said these words to the disciples, also when he's risen from the dead, when he's about to go back to heaven, he said something else. Verse 46, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary 
for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And in Acts chapter 1, he says this, Acts chapter 1, verse 7, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So here's Jesus saying, go, I've given you authority, go. And then in the next breath, he's saying, don't go. Go, don't go. Go, wait. <laughs> because he wants these two things to come together. The commission says go. The authority part says go. I've given you authority. But the power part says get the power first. Wait in Jerusalem until you've received the power. Authority comes with the commission. Power comes with the encounter. Power is the ability to do what the Holy Spirit has commanded us to do. So let's have a look in Acts chapter 2. This wonderful passage. Please turn in your Bible. You know the rule in Life Spring Church. Bring your Bibles. Bring your Bibles. Amen. Don't leave home without your Bible. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues of fire that sat on each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They had a divine encounter. Oh, praise the Lord. Wow. They had a divine encounter with the Holy Spirit. God has encounters for you. God has spiritual power, spiritual muscle from heaven for you and me. Well, what am I doing with this hedge trimmer? Ah, well, the observant ones among you will notice something a little unusual about this hedge trimmer in that it has an extra little uh, adapter, okay, that means as it is like that, it's very short. Anyone know why this is? Oh, other hedge trimmer owners are quick <laughs> off the mark. Exactly. So, <laughs> so you know what it's like. You're, you're, you're cutting away and getting a little bit sort of liberal, swinging this thing about. All of a sudden, zzz, nothing's happening. You look down and you've cut through your own power cord. And um, I've done it more than once. This used to, used to be about that long. And then I, <laughs> it's, it's getting shorter and shorter. So I just go into the garage, uh, into one of my boxes, find a plug and an adapter, whip them on. And I, I, I'm, I'm not going to let a little accident like that stop me from finishing my job. So, so I, I, I get back and, and I, I get a connector on like this and presto, I'm back in action ready for the next time I, I slice through the cord. But what, what is it? What I'm, what I'm describing is a self-inflicted power cut. A self-induced power cut. And I want you to know there are a lot of believers suffering from a self-inflicted power cut. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He is, like we've heard, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Jireh, 
Jehovah Shammah, he's almighty God. I want you to know there is no power shortage in heaven. There is no energy crisis in heaven. There is no shortage in heaven. Jesus has been crowned and he received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit and he poured out on the day of Pentecost. He poured out like the rain this morning running down the roads. He poured out his Holy Spirit. The problem is not in heaven. The problem is believers slicing through the power and then, you know, wandering around in life with a power crisis. It doesn't work. What's going on? All this Holy Spirit Christianity thing. Oh, God, help me. And you need to look down and see what's happened. Where it matters. A lot of believers are suffering from self-inflicted power cuts. And it's time to reconnect with the source of power. Amen. Reconnect. Get your connection back with the Holy Spirit. Thus says the Lord. Get connected because there is no lack of power or willingness from the hands of your loving Heavenly Father. He's ready for you to connect. This is the month of connection. Hallelujah. I want you to loosen up, limber up, Position your heart, get ready, focus. Let this month of June 2022 be a season of divine encounter for you. Hallelujah. It's time to reconnect. Hallelujah. God is no, um, he doesn't have, I, I, no respecter of persons, that's the expression. God is no respecter of persons. Every one of us in this room and everyone listening to this, watching this on, on the live stream or on catch up, this word is for you. Get connected. Get connected to the source of power. And I want to suggest three, three ways, three lies of the enemy, three things that we need to do to, to stop slicing through the power ourselves. God isn't doing it, but we can very quickly, very easily cut through our own power connection with the Holy Spirit. Number one, it's not for me, it's for others. What a damnable lie of the enemy. What a damnable lie from the pit of hell. God took ordinary fishermen, tax collectors, ordinary people, men and women, he prophesied through Joel, even on your men servants and maid servants, the lowest in the social ranking, the lowest in the economic or educational ranking, the lowest in the um, how can I put it the, 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 the ways in which men may judge us, the lowest in the ranking, God says. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. Has not God chosen those things that are foolish in the eyes of the world to confound the wisdom of the wise? Has not God chosen those things that look stupid in the world's eyes and ignorant in the world's eyes to put to shame those that are seemingly so proud and able in the eyes of the world? God has taken those things that are not to confound those things that in the world's eyes seem so important. That's you and me. Hallelujah. It's not for me. Oh, yes, it is. It's for you and your children's children and to all who are near and far, to all who will call on the name of the Lord. Now, guys, I, I want to urge you to make this month a time when you position your heart and say, yes, Lord, 
I count myself in to divine encounters with the Holy Spirit. You don't know how they'll come, by which means or through whom they will come, but thank God. Oh, thank God for the divine encounters that God has for us. And it all begins with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And I want to give an opportunity today when we finish in a few minutes, anybody who's not received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, this is your opportunity to receive that divine blessing. You know, I was 12 years old when I gave my life to Christ. I was 16 when I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Today, I, I have been walking in that experience all of these years from 1971. At that time, the Lord was pouring out his spirit. Today, we don't hear so much about the value and importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's a great shame to me because it's one of those things that pastors and preachers and ministers should continually return to and emphasize and revisit. It's a prerequisite. God has a baptism of the Holy Spirit for you. Don't say it's not for me. It's for you. It's got your name on it. The Holy Spirit is poised, leaning over, bending over, ready to touch your life, ready to fill you, ready to do what he did for the early church on the day of Pentecost. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't tire of it. It's so simple. It's so simple. It changed my life. I was weak, spineless, insecure teenager. But when the Holy Spirit came upon me, everything changed. I never looked back. It's for you. The second thing, the second way that we can cut through our power is by complacency, a lack of hunger. You know, Mary said when she prophesied to the Lord, he said, she, she said these words, she said, the hungry he has filled with good things, but the rich or the full he has sent empty away. You can count yourself out by not being hungry. God is drawn to the hungry. If you are hungry, God will fill you. He doesn't ask you to be perfect. He doesn't ask you to be mature. When I was baptized in the Holy Spirit at the age of 16, you couldn't have thought of anyone less qualified than me for such an encounter with the Holy Spirit. But I think the Lord is a little bit like Life Spring Church. We have an expression, don't we? Um, that says, <laughs> it's okay to not be okay. And when you come to the Lord, your heavenly father, and you say, Lord, I'm not worthy, and I'm this and I'm that, he says, it's okay to not be okay. I've got the Holy Spirit for you. And he gives the Holy Spirit so that he comes on the inside of us, and he transforms us from the inside. The power of the Holy Spirit comes in you. He, he, he casts out the fear. He casts out the depression and the worry and anxiety. He replaces the weakness with strength. <laughs> the fear with boldness. God does all those things. God does an inside job. Christianity is not about me trying to conform to some external standard. It's about the Holy Spirit coming in and filling and flooding me with his power and changing me from the inside. Are you hungry for that? Are you thirsty for that? Listen, it's, it, I say this respectfully. For some of you, it's time to stop grumbling and groaning and whining and moaning and get hungry and get in the face of God because he's the one that will supply what you need. 
Don't go to the phone, go to the throne. He's got his arms open wide for you. And so many Christians are going everywhere except to the throne. These believers, they lock themselves in with God for seven days and nights, sought the Lord, and he answered from heaven. What is it that stops us? Only one thing, hunger. Hunger. God, give us the gift of hunger. Spiritual hungry. Ho oh, unto you, all you that are thirsty, come unto me and drink, receive of the living water. Ah, are you hungry this morning? How hungry are you? Good. Then there's a promise for you. He's going to fill you. How hungry are you? Dear Lord, dear God, we're not here to entertain you. We're here to tease out the hunger in you. What will you do? What will it take to stir us from our complacency, to get us onto our knees in prayer, in worship, in hunger, in adoration, in the face of God? What will it do to change our daily habit, to spend time in his presence? Oh, Jesus, I am thirsty. <sighs> Jesus, I am thirsty. Won't you come and fill me? Earthly things have left me dry. Only you can satisfy. All I want is more of you. All I want is more of you. All I want is more of you. Nothing else will satisfy but more of you. All I want is more of you. All I want is more of you. Nothing else will satisfy but more of you. More of you. That's, that's me in my time with the Lord. That's a glimpse of what I do. I don't need, I don't need to put some music on. I just kneel in his presence and sing those songs and stir my heart. Oh God, give us the gift of hunger. Give us the gift of spiritual hunger. You can lament the state of the nation. You can tut tut about what you read in the Daily Mail or the Guardian, or you you can you can bewail what you see on your Twitter feed. But the answer is is in your hands. The answer is in front of us. God, give us, please, Lord, I pray, give us the gift of spiritual hunger. If nothing else, Lord, in this season of Pentecost, in this month of June, if nothing else, Lord, give us the gift of divine spiritual hunger. Lord, I pray, oh, Jesus. The third thing, and then we, we will have some ministry the third way that we can cut through the spiritual power is through the, 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 the barriers, you know. There's nothing like offense to shut down 
the power station of heaven in your heart. Oh my God, offense and unforgiveness is such a crippling spiritual disease in the church of Jesus Christ. Let it go, my friend. Let it go. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And if you say, well, Pastor Tony, the, the feelings just well up again when I see that person's face or think of their name, then immediately get on your knees and forgive again. That's what you do. That's all you do. Just keep forgiving. Keep doing it. Oh, pride, sin. These are the barriers that the blood of Jesus has obliterated and removed and made a way for us to come to the throne of grace in order to receive divine power, spiritual encounters. Oh, Father, fill us, flood us, soak us, saturate us, Lord Jesus, I have not tired in my heart in my quest and pursuit for the Lord. There's been times when I've got distracted, times when the enemy has tripped me up like everybody else, but the Holy Spirit has brought me back, right back to love him, Worship him, hunger for him. You know, I thank God for this church and ministry. I thank God for the amazing people we have, our team, our staff, everybody who does what they do is incredible. The churches we have around the region, our overseas pastors and churches, the vision we have, the fact that right now we have a team in Paris, we have team in Emmanuel Church, we're doing all these things, yet when I strip it all away, actually, it's about Jesus, loving him, hungering for him, and desiring him above anything else. Oh God, let that be our experience. I want you to just be aware right now of his presence in this place, open up your heart to him, begin to hunger for him. If you confess your apathy, if you say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm complacent, I can't remember the last time I just knelt in your presence on my own and sang and worshipped and I'm just too preoccupied with everything, everything else, then tell him, tell him, say, Lord, I come back to you. I come back now. I don't want a comfortable church and a cold heart. I don't want a red hot vision and a cold heart. I don't want a gifted leadership but a cold heart. God, set my heart on fire. Set my heart on fire. Give me the fire of heaven. In Leviticus 9, when the tabernacle was built, God said to the people, oh, this is where I'm going to finish here. I am going to finish right here. Leviticus chapter 9. He said, um, Aaron lifted his hands toward the people, blessed them, came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offering. Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of meeting, blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. <laughs> wow. Fire came down and lit the altar. Okay? Supernatural fire came down and lit that altar. But in Leviticus chapter 6... God says this to the, the Levites, and the fire, verse 12, the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering every day. 
A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. The fire comes from heaven. The Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. Amen. We've all received. But then God gives us the charge to keep the fire, tend the fire, fan into flame the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of hands through the Holy Spirit. It's God's responsibility to to, to light the fire in your heart, but it's your responsibility to feed the fire, to fuel the fire, to worship to love God, to fast and pray or do whatever it takes to keep the fire of God burning in your heart. Oh God, amen. Is somebody getting this? Anybody getting this? I'm sorry, it's too simple for you. I'm sorry if it's just too simple and basic and childlike. I don't, I don't have any other tricks. I've got nothing else, just, a, just a, a hedge tremor and my Bible this morning, that's all I've got. But my heart is full because because God forbid that we should have a warm, comfortable church with coffee and children's work and cold hearts. God, give us burning hearts. It's burning hearts that will revive our nation. It's burning hearts that God is after. Is your heart burning? Yes or no, it doesn't matter quite honestly because all you need to do is say, Lord, give me more. And this month we want to position our hearts not to be spectators, entertain, but to say, God, set my heart on fire. Is anybody hungry in here? Are you hungry? Lord, give us more. If we could have the worship team come up here, please. Oh, God, if you're hungry, I want you to stand to your feet and just begin to... Reach into God right now. If you're not hungry, stand your feet and repent and say, Lord, give me that hunger that I lack. Heavenly Father, if you speak in tongues, begin to speak in tongues. Listen, this morning is, is not about a, a, a one a one spot event, a one time thing. I'm talking about preparing our hearts for a mighty Pentecost month that day by day and week by week we are reaching into God for more of Him, more of Him. Lift your hands to the Lord. Open your mouth in praise. Speak in tongues. Say, Lord, forgive me for my complacency. Forgive me for being self-obsessed. I want Jesus. I want more of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, stir up, fan into flame. Nobody can do that for you. The preacher can't do that. God can't do that. Only you can fan the flame in your own heart. Only you can do that, my friend. God is not going to come and like some puppet master, manipulate you, move your hands and feet, make you do things you're unwilling to do. You have to move your own heart. You have to make a decision in your own spirit. I am going to put Jesus first. I'm going to set him high in my heart. He's going to be number one. I'm going to hunger for him, thirst for him, seek his face, set apart time in his presence. Be here on a Sunday for revival time at 9.30. Come with a hungry heart, ready to receive. As we worship, if you're hungry, I want you to come to the front. Just come from your seats. Come from the aisles. Don't wait for someone else. But if you want to say, yes, I want to be part of this month of divine encounter. I want to meet the Lord. I want a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Don't wait for someone else. Don't wait for your husband or your wife or your mom or your dad or your son or your daughter or your best friend. Don't look to the left or the right. Are you hungry this morning? Just come to the front and just engage with the Holy Spirit right now. Just keep coming. 
come forward so that people don't have to stay in the aisles. Is this the only hungry people we have in the house? God help us. Lord, where are the hungry this morning? Where are the hungry? Where are the hungry ones? Lord, we're not interested in the number of members we have, but the number of hungry hearts that we have. Lord Jesus, give us hungry hearts. Pour out the gift of hunger. Don't wait for someone to lay hands on you. Just engage with heaven yourself. Take it right now. Take the power. Take the encounter. Take the Holy Spirit. You and Jesus, you and the Holy Spirit right now. Open your mouth and begin to speak in tongues. Pull down from heaven. We use this expression, put a demand on heaven. Put a demand on heaven. Position your heart for heaven to come to you. Give him an offering this morning. Put an offering on the altar of your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't go anywhere. Don't go back to your seat. We have time. Give time, give time, give time. The disciples waited seven days. We can wait seven minutes or seven hours. Lord, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit this morning. Deliver us from our complacency, Lord. Every one of us knows how to come before our Father. You don't need a Bible study course on that. You don't need a discipleship group. You just need to be hungry. You just need to come. The Holy Spirit is stirring this morning. It starts here. It starts now. It starts with you. Receive, receive, receive. Oh, parasha babarabakisha. Hallelujah. Shagan, I want you to begin to pray for people. Hallelujah. Mike, I want you to begin to get in front of people. Start laying hands on people. Nadine, I want you to begin to pray with people. Just go from one to the other. Stand in front of them. Stand in front. Go from one to the other. Lay hands on them. Annie, go from one to the other. Lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ursula, help. Join us, please, darling. While these people are being prayed for, I'm making an appeal for anybody who doesn't speak in tongues. Today's your day. Come out the front. Come and join those that are here because God wants to give you the gift of tongues today. Don't stay where you are. Come and join these people down the front. We're going to pray for you to receive the gift of tongues. Anyone who's not received the baptism of the Spirit, you may be a believer, but you've not received the baptism of the Spirit, come and join those down the front. Come and receive. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to keep pressing in here. We're not in any hurry. The Lord is doing great things, but it's up to you to press in, press in, press in. Thank you. Let's lead us in some worship. We're going to have a ministry time now. Praise God. Thanks for joining us this morning. Subscribe for more ministry from Lifespring.